Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Secrets of a Witch podcast with yours truly, Sabrina Scott. Hello. I hope you guys are doing good. On this podcast, I talk about life, love, spirituality, witchcraft, magic, feminine energy, tarot, mediumship, and everything in between. And I hope you guys are doing great. Today's topic, let me see. <laughs> I was kind of like, fuck, should I make this a podcast episode or should I just write a very scathing essay kind of somewhere between op-ed and academic ramble? And I've decided just for now to make a podcast episode and I'll probably end up actually writing a piece on this at some point. So I feel like I used to write a lot of thick pieces, but it's been a while. So (laughs) anyway, um, what I wanted to rant about is that I feel like, and I know this is going to sound very like, I don't know, maybe a bit cliche, maybe a bit trite, but it's really something I've been thinking about lately with the current uh, war in the Middle East and all of the fucking drama everywhere with everyone's different takes on it and how people are treating each other as a result of different opinions about this. And I'm honestly just beyond sick of it all. And I just want to talk a little bit about that, you know, how people are just being excommunicated from friend groups from this or that for just having different opinions about something. And it's interesting is obviously, and I'm not going to get too into the weeds in terms of politics. I think that's really not the point here because I've seen this happen with so many different things, whether it is political or not. It's just, I don't think it really matters if I'm talking about this war or a different war or something political or something, you know, whatever happening in pop culture. We all are going to have our different opinions about shit, right? And I am someone who, as you guys know, I have been a supporter of Palestine for like, I don't know, since I was a teenager for a really long time now, I guess almost 20 years, which is kind of crazy. It makes me feel very old to say that. (laughs) But I personally don't agree with the way that Israel was founded, et cetera, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's just, I just have a lot of feelings about that. It's just not not the vibe, I don't think. But despite that, like, I do have friends on either side of this. I have friends who are super far left, who right now all they do is post fucking Palestine stuff, like, endlessly, like, infographics and pictures and blah, blah, blah. And then I've got friends who are Jewish, who, some of which are against Israel, some of which are pro-Israel, some of which are Zionist, some of which are not. And one of the things I'm really glad about for my own self is that I am fine being friends with people of a variety of perspectives on this conflict. And we all might have different you know, lines on where we draw that. Like, I think around something like rape, I'm going to be very cut and dry in terms of where people stand on that topic. Like, if the person, the imaginary person in this example is, like, skeptical of rape survivors, like, that likely would be an absolute deal breaker for me when it comes to a friendship or anything like that, just for, I think, obvious reasons. And so we all are going to have this line that we draw in different places. And that makes sense. We're all different people. We all have different life experiences. We all have, uh, like, I don't know, just different values and different, different trajectories, different experiences that cause us to maybe emphasize certain things as being particularly important to us. And I don't know. I just think it's, it's cool to be able to coexist with people of different perspectives You know, I I just think that's a cool skill. And I didn't used to have this skill. I remember being a teenager and being very, like, aggressive in my politics. I remember being so traumatized that I had a very black and white kind of trigger-happy view of people. So people wronged me. I would just kind of immediately excommunicate. And I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with that. I think I can, I can really psychoanalyze my teenage self. I think part of that was because I didn't have the warning bells. So I ended up in connection with people who were shitty anyway. 
Uh, I just didn't notice until those extreme moments. That being said, I also do know there must have been some good people with genuine intentions who probably got caught in the crossfire of my like extreme vibes when I was a teenager, like people I probably overreacted to due to that difference and due to that oversensitivity that a lot of traumatized people have. It's just a part of how it goes as we heal from trauma, right? A lot of the wires kind of get crossed and a lot of the wires get a little bit confused. And so a lot of that can make it very like easy to find difference difficult right and so there's that aspect of it there's that trauma stuff um but I don't even know if that's the main reason we see a lot of this stuff happening now like a lot of these extreme disagreements around a lot of different things (sighs) You know, and it just breaks my heart. You know, I've seen just a lot of people like communicating each other over this. There was some local drama in Toronto recently where there is a classic shithole music venue that if you're into punk or indie music or kind of underground music at any point in your life, you probably have been there. Whenever I go there, I feel like I'm going to get some kind of disease because it's so dirty. But I, so I never go there now. I went there once earlier this year. For the first time in, God, at least a decade. But I was there a lot as a teenager in my early 20s because that's what the music was playing at that I enjoyed. So that's where I went. And this place, the TLDR of this situation is there was an event that was happening and then it got changed to a political event. Like a, I th- believe it was a fundraiser for something Palestine related. Don't quote me on this, but as far as I'm aware, and I might be wrong, I think it was a fundraiser to the legal defense of people who were protesting recently here in Toronto. And personally, I'm just like, that's such bullshit. I don't want my money to go to these idiots. Like, are you serious? Ridiculous. Ridiculous. And so the venue canceled the event. I think it makes sense. They say that their mandate is to not host political or religious events. Makes sense. And it's, you know, what? it's their space. They get to decide. Just like you get to decide who comes in your house. You get to decide who hangs out in your living room. If someone owns a bar, they get to decide who hangs out in the bar. And just because someone buys a drink, if they're acting rowdy, it does not give them full on the right to stay there. People can kick them out of the bar. You know what I mean? Like if I was at a bar, I bought a drink and I bashed a bottle over someone's head. I should get kicked out. (laughs) You know, it just, of course I should. I'm breaking the rules. I'm not being nice. Is crazy. And so I do think it is so important for anyone who runs a space, whether it's a bar, a music venue, an Instagram page, whatever it is, we all get to have moderation, by which I mean like assessment on who gets to be in the space, who doesn't, what the space gets to be for, what the space is not for, what is allowed in the space and what is not allowed in the space and what kind of events and people we want on our space and what we don't. That is within everyone's right. I think a lot of people today have forgotten it's not a human right to be able to hold your protest fundraiser at any old business that you don't own. It's a very bizarre entitled attitude. And so it's really frustrated me to see so many calls for like cancellation of this this venue. I just find it really out of touch. They're calling these people all these names. They're insulting them, all this stuff. All the while, they're ignoring their complete and utter entitlement to be hosted at a venue that they do not own. It's very bizarre. And so I see a lot of these scuffles and disagreements and clashes lately around this particular issue. And obviously it's happening around a lot of other different political stuff too. Like we saw it during COVID with the vaccinated and unvaccinated and all of this. And like I've been vaccinated four times. And yet like I know a few people that haven't been and am I going to excommunicate them? Like no. Do I agree with everyone's choices? Not necessarily, but like I really think that if we just end up cutting off every single person and demonizing everyone with whom we don't agree on everything 100%, we're not really going to have any people left. And I don't really believe in echo chambers. It's like, yeah, there's some things I will tolerate and there's some things I won't. Like respect is the main thing for me in terms of will I interface with this person or situation, respect, curiosity, 
those are really important to me. Integrity. If we can operate with those three main values, then like, that's cool, you know? And what I'm seeing instead of that, unfortunately, is a lot of, I'm trying to think how to phrase this, a lot of kind of, like, it kind of has this almost religious tone to it, where it's like, these are the beliefs, these are the correct things. And if you question this, if you disagree in any way, then you are, you know, insert fill in the blank, it's like, you are racist, you are phobic you are anti this you are this that and like everyone is being called these horrible names and it's very horrible like I just you know I, I hate it and like what I'm seeing is it just all seems very tribalist it seems very totalitarian it seems very fascist in its own way as well even though a lot of this is happening from a far left vantage point it still does seem to me quite fascist to be honest it seems quite authoritarian. It seems quite totalitarian. It seems quite high demand group. It seems quite culty. And it also, it's like these spaces, I really would encourage you guys to just be aware, like how many thought terminating cliches, how many of these little slogans. And if you question anything, you're basically de- denounced as an evil person. And that is really not how healthy discourse or healthy coalition building or healthy relationship building of any type happens. These people who claim to be all about community and building relationships are just like running around like raging assholes. And, you know, if you, unless you submit to everything they say, they basically think you're a demon and you're the enemy. And that is a very like bizarre childish adolescent actually an immature way to engage with the world around us it's very limiting it's very sad and fortunately not everyone is operating in this way but I've just seen this take over so many circles of people that I thought were smart (laughs) and I'm like wow jokes on me I guess but it's also so interesting to notice how many people are taken in by this Something else I noticed recently, and this is no shade on this person, much love to this person, but when I saw this, it really, it really stuck with me, right? So there is a celebrity who I will not name, um, who personally I really think is great for a lot of reasons. I know a lot of people like this celebrity, is, the celebrity is currently having a moment. Um, personally, I'm a fan. Um, I know somebody posted a picture of this person's book and being like yay and I guess recently they found out that this person the celebrity is a Zionist which I have not even googled this so I cannot confirm or deny if this is true and so then they posted a picture of them like flipping off like giving the middle finger to this book with this celebrity that they had previously really liked and so my disclaimer I have not had a conversation about this with this person I I don't think I will like it's not really my business And I'm not saying this to put anyone on blast, but I do think this is a great example of this attitude. And maybe this was just a, you know, a moment of, of rage or hurt or whatever. And I have compassion for that, but I just want to break it down as like, cause I've seen this a lot, right? I've seen this a lot. And so even if this celebrity isn't, is a Zionist and I am not a Zionist personally, I feel I can still enjoy the contributions of the celebrity. I feel like I can still appreciate them. I feel like I can still like them I feel like I can still be a fan while acknowledging that maybe we don't agree with everything in terms of politics I'm fine with that (laughs) you know and so when we expect these celebrities or these idols or whoever or even people in our social circle to have exactly the same rhetoric that we believe in and if they don't then we're going to flip off a picture of their book like why like that to me is just very immature it's very childish And it's just like, oh, I just hate it so much. So I feel like that's not really the way to be. And like, obviously, everyone can be mad at whoever the fuck they want to be mad at. It's like, not really my business. Like, do your thing. Knock yourself out. But to me, it just, the fact that this action, that that was something to share, that was an action to document this public denunciation of this person. Like, I feel like there's this, it's happening in this vast political theater landscape I think where politics have become fetish and I'll talk about that I think later another episode or another piece of writing maybe 
it's just all very weird. And I think part of it is, you know, I've had that, I've had that happen to me. Interestingly, I remember this was a long time ago, but there was someone who put me on a pedestal. Um, this is so long ago. Oh my God. Which body had just come out? I was in my mid twenties. Um, this person was basically obsessed with me. They were really, really obsessed with me for some reason, whatever it happens. It was weird. I was like keeping my limits. I was keeping my boundaries. Um, eventually some certain things transpired uh, and this person took me off of that pedestal. This is why I don't believe anyone should be on any pedestal as dehumanizing to everyone involved. Um, anyway, this person took me off the pedestal and then they fucking hated me. And so they ended up destroying the copy of Witch Body basically to make a point about how much they hated me. And you know, drawing all over it, writing profanity all over it, ripping it up. And so it's like whatever violence that person wanted to do to me, they did to my book. And I've had a few people do that and like send me this. And it does hurt my feelings a little bit. But on the other hand, I'm like, wow, this person's a fucking nutcase. Like, God help them, you know. But it uh, it just feels hurtful in a way. And I guess that's the point. And like, I guess I, you know, I can't be hurt by this stuff because it's just their own psychosis, I guess. But I just, I see this kind of thing for what it is, right? It's like when we use these objects, these symbols of people to like lash out at, like that also shows a weakness on our part. You know, these people bashing my book back in the day. Um, This person flipping off this celebrity's book. It's like what possesses someone to behave that way? You know, there's this whole pedestal, pedestal culture. There is you know, the weird parasocial relationship thing. There's the idealization of people who really are just human beings. At the end of the day, I'm just a human being, you know, just this celebrity is a human being. Yeah, we might have contributed some cool shit to the world. And I'm not saying that we haven't. But at the end of the day, we're, we're humans, you know. And to put anyone on a pedestal, to take someone off a pedestal, both of those things are equally dehumanizing. And I think we see both of those things happen with, you know, this example I'm giving about my book from back in the day and also this example of the celebrity, this person with with that celebrity's book. It's violent in a way. And I just, I it, honestly, it bothers me that this is the state of the discourse. It bothers me that this is how grown adults feel it's appropriate to behave. It bothers me that maybe people feel like they need to do this uh, in the case of a celebrity to like publicly denounce a celebrity so that they're not tainted by, you know, being associated with a celebrity who's a Zionist. It's just like, God, I hate, I hate it. And, you know, I hate as well that I've had a Palestinian kafia since I was 17 and I used to wear it all the time, even when no one knew what it was. I'd get random people on the street high-fiving me every now and then or honking their horn and, like, yelling at me out the window being happy. Um, But now I don't really want to wear it in public because I don't want to be associated with the crazy activists who are breaking shit and doing graffiti on stuff and doing all of this public disturbance and being so horrible to everyone who does not meet their standards of quote-unquote activism like I just find the whole thing reprehensible and I really don't want to participate in any of it and so all I can do is really sit back and observe everything observe my reactions like hopefully take some interesting insights on my reactions my observations and share that with you guys because I do think it's important to respond to all of this and not just react And when we're in a space of reaction, it's a knee-jerk reaction, often that comes from fear, fear of being bad, fear of being excommunicated, fear of, you know, whatever. And it's just all very unfortunate that this is like currently how it is. And so I'm very thankful, um, you know, that I'm able to maintain connections with people that have very different political ideas than I do. And that's what keeps life interesting, I love talking to people who have different opinions than me. I learn a lot. Maybe my opinion changes over to their side. Maybe it doesn't. And maybe what I really learned from that conversation is some. maybe I learned some gaps in my knowledge. Maybe I learn some ways for me to be more persuasive of people who disagree with me. I think we learn the most when we're not in an echo chamber. It's important.
it's important. And so I will always share my often very counterintuitive opinions with you guys. So I hope you guys have found this interesting. And I hope everyone's doing well amidst all of the crazy stuff in the world, all of the rise of all these different types of violence. Uh, God, it's just a weird moment right now. Well, I just hope everyone is safe. I hope as you're listening to this, you are safe. I hope everyone's doing okay. Uh, Much prayers for everyone who is uh, struggling right now because I know it is tough and anyway that's the episode I'm just gonna cut it there I know it's a little bit abrupt but those are my thoughts I hope everyone's doing great if you're looking for something to do you can go check out my YouTube and there's gonna be past videos you can go listen to past episodes of this podcast who knows maybe you'll find something interesting to listen to what else of course my website is sabrinamscott.com you can check out my Instagram, Sabrina M. Scott. And of course, my YouTube is youtube.com slash Sabrina Scott, no M. Why not check out one of my books? You can find them on Amazon. Just look up Sabrina Scott. My first book, Witch Body, and my second book, Curse and Cure, Magic for Real Life. The second one is a bit of a how-to, and the first one is a philosophical manifesto about the power of magic to completely change and revolutionize our lives. Okay, that's it for now. Much love. Bye, friends.